I want to give you the best thing to do if you have pain or inflammation or you're on some type of a coxin 2 inhibitor or some other pain medication. So typically people take for a cox 2 inhibitor uh, Tylenol or aspirin or even Vioxx, which was taken off the market. So first let's talk about what cox 2 means, okay? This is an immune response, whether it's in response to an injury for a healing response, or it's to attack a microbe to kill it. And so they created these COX-2 inhibitors that block that inflammation. And a lot of people take them from pain. A lot of people take way too many of these medications and they have a lot of side effects. Inflammation, typically when it starts, uh, is actually a good thing. But the problem is when the inflammation is not appropriate anymore and it's become chronic, that's when we need to get rid of it because this inflammation can literally dissolve your bones, destroy your joints, create massive degeneration within the body. And also cancer tends to follow into areas of inflammation. Before I get into what I think is one of the best natural COX-2 inhibitors, I want to just briefly mention this one topic, which is your genetics. Fairly recently, they've discovered genetic weaknesses for inflammation and pain. And so I listed a whole series of genes that if you have a specific problem with these genes, you may, if the triggers are there, have more pain, more inflammation than someone who doesn't have a problem with these. And the reason I'm even bringing this up is because I had a DNA evaluation and apparently that is my, my weakness. I have a lot of problems with the genes that I'm showing you right now. So for example, if I over-exercise, for example, or do the wrong type of exercise, I will just end up with inflammation for a long period of time. If I have some dental work, uh, the inflammation will linger for a lot longer. If my diet is not right, now it is, but in the past it wasn't right, I will just fill up with inflammation, which explains all the inflammation I had through my spine, through my hands when I was in my 20s and early 30s. So these are genetic problems that you need to be aware of because you can do something about them. And I'm going to give you a whole list of generally what you can do to keep these genes off. Okay. So they're not excessively producing too much inflammation. So you don't necessarily at this point need to go get a test. I'm just going to show you what to do. And uh, they're triggered by various things. We'll talk about that. But let's first cover the main topic that I promised I would talk about, which is the best natural COX-2 inhibitor that I think can help you with your pain or inflammation. And it relates to aspirin. The way they discovered aspirin is through a natural plant called willow bark. They isolated a certain compound of willow bark, which is a very potent COX-2 inhibitor, okay, an anti-inflammatory, an anti-pain, anti-fever. And this compound is called salicylic acid. But what's interesting about willow bark, uh, you might just think you could just take some willow bark and um, take a little bit and it should just get rid of your pain. And it might. Now, the question is, if aspirin was created from willow bark, why don't doctors just recommend willow bark? Um, well, there's not a lot of money in it. And of course, it's not going to be studied because you can't necessarily patent it. And so they're not going to promote it. If you have something that's synthetically made by a certain plant compound, you can you know, control the dosage and sell it for a lot of money. The problem with aspirin is that comes with a package. It has side effects. It destroys the mucosal lining in your GI system. It has been known to cause ulcers and bleeding and thin your blood. But willow bark doesn't do any of that. It won't alter the mucus lining in your gut. It won't thin your blood. It has very minor side effects, if any. You don't get a lot of the salicylic acid, okay? You get byproducts of that which are not necessarily even the reason why you're going to get rid of inflammation. These phytonutrients are just amazing. You have flavonoids, you have polyphenols that have various properties to get rid of pain. Now, in the studies that I'm going to talk about, which I'm going to list down below, you're going to need between 120 to 240 milligrams, okay, in order for it to work. And sometimes uh, you may need to take it for several days, up to a week to see the effects. But just to remind you, there's going to be no effect on blood thinning or blood clotting. There's no change in the GI mucus layer. 
And with these other compounds, because we're dealing with a complex of many different things, we're not just dealing with one isolated factor, you can get a nice inhibition of COX-1 and COX-2 and many other effects as well. There's something else called 5 lox You can inhibit that. Apparently, these compounds in willow bark also modulate or regulate these other cytokines like IL-1, 6, 8, and 10 as well as creating a, a decrease of other things that create inflammation, like the tumor necrosis factor and the NF-kappa B. These are just things that create more inflammation. Willow bark can inhibit or help modulate all of those factors. In one study, it was shown that willow bark was as effective in reducing inflammation as aspirin. I mean, to me, that's very surprising that this information is not broadly promoted. Of course, I know why but I think you need to know about it. It also does other things. It helps to reduce um, white blood cell reactions, and it has a potent effect of lowering um, cytokines, which are those things that create inflammation. Now, sometimes you have to increase the dose and take it for a little bit longer, but it has virtually no side effects unless you have an allergy to it. And you can also take willow bark for gout as well, which is um, a big problem for many people. But now let's talk about some other things you can do if you potentially have some type of gene issue. Now, again, just because your genes are altered doesn't mean you're going to have more inflammation or pain, especially if you don't have the triggers, like you've never been injured, you don't experience stress, you never have any losses in your life, your diet's perfect, you have no nutritional deficiencies, and you've never taken an antibiotic. So that being said, um, I don't think we're going to find anyone in that situation uh, personally, I've had so many old injuries. I mean, just crazy amount of injuries. I've been under massive stress. My diet has sucked for well over half of my life. I've had many, many doses of antibiotics. So these are some things that I would recommend to do, uh, generally speaking, okay? Make sure that you have enough omega-3 fatty acids and at the same time, you must avoid the omega-6 fatty acids. I have a lot of videos on this, but the cod liver oil is a really good omega-3 fatty acid because it gives you vitamin D and vitamin A as well. But sometimes you have to take omega-3 for a good amount of time if you're very deficient. So it could take months, potentially even a few years if you are very, very deficient to replenish the omega-3 fatty acids and get this ratio back in check. Now, the second most important thing is this vitamin D. Uh, I've done videos on this and a small amount of vitamin D, especially if you have a genetic problem, is not going to cut it because out of all the natural nutrients, vitamin D is the most potent anti-inflammatory and anti-pain, especially if you have lower back pain or any type of chronic pain or chronic inflammation that comes from autoimmune diseases. Going on a low carb is very, very important too, because the more carbs you have in the diet, the more inflammation you are going to have. Doing moderate exercise, okay, not overtraining. Tai Chi is good. Yoga is great. Anything low intensity. Aquatic exercises are really good too. Magnesium is another important remedy, but you can get that in consuming a good amount of vegetables. The vegetables alone have all sorts of anti-inflammatory phytonutrients. Then we have this genetic problem of methylation, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but just realize that if you have a problem with methylation, you are going to have more inflammation. You won't be able to detoxify. Uh, you might be depressed. And so this can be easily prevented if you take folate, methylcobolamine, which is a B12, and you take choline, and you take B1, the natural version, not the synthetic versions, it can greatly assist in your genes and make them work right so you can eliminate inflammation and pain and a lot of other problems. Regular intermittent fasting and periodic prolonged fasting, dynamite for inflammation and pain. I mean, if you just did that alone, you'd probably completely get rid of your pain. Why? Because all these pro-survival genetics enzymes kick in when you stop eating. I mean, it's just quite remarkable. Your immune system starts getting really, really strong. Infrared is a great therapy. You can get um, all sorts of infrared therapy type pads or lasers that have a huge effect on pain. And it will also increase melatonin, which will help you systemically with many other problems, including sleeping.
Probiotics, okay, very important, especially for pain. A lot of people have inflammation because their gut isn't right. And I'm talking about the microbiome. Getting more diversity in your microbes can greatly drop inflammation, uh, a lot of times down to zero. And of course, you're going to have to avoid certain things that are irritating your colon, like gluten and grains, but a probiotic can greatly help you. Cold water therapy, whether it's a cold shower or an ice bath or cryotherapy. I did a video on this topic and I talked about if you have an acute injury and you apply cold, that might not be the best action because you're getting rid of the healing response. But if that inflammation is turned chronic, it's inappropriate, cold therapy is a good thing. Cold shower, it might be very uncomfortable. But if you have a B1 deficiency, your tolerance for cold goes way, way, way down. So you might need B1 so you can get enough nerve up to take that cold shower, but it can greatly help inflammation. And of course, the other obvious thing is avoiding alcohol, smoking, things like that. Just as a side note, there are many, many natural remedies that are COX-2 inhibitors, okay? Like turmeric, for example. But turmeric also does a lot of other things too. It can act in a similar mechanism to cortisol without the side effects. In one study, it was shown that um, the active ingredient in turmeric, curcumin, was as effective as another anti-inflammatory called phenylbutazone, which if I'm not mistaken, that's taken off the market in the US and the UK. Bromelain is that enzyme 